we're going to take a closer look this week at some of the dramatic ways that work in America is changing. In this century, the American workforce has more than quadrupled. Today, somewhere in America, 130 million people were doing something to make a living. Almost as many women working as men, which is very different from a generation ago. It is what we do today that indicates how the country and the economy have changed. There are more people today who work at Walmarts than in the steel industry. Uh, there are more people who work in dentist offices than in the automobile industry. Uh, over three quarters of the workforce is really in the service economy. And here's another significant change from the last generation. The average American is likely to change jobs six or seven times in his or her lifetime. As many as one out of every three people in the workforce is working in what we would call non-traditional kinds of jobs. That is, where they're only working part-time, where they're temporary workers, where they may be self-employed, a whole range of combinations. Certainly, the idea of job loyalty is changing. Here's ABC's Betsy Stark. So I did a lot more business this month than I expected. Meet the board of directors for the 21st century. It's kind of done deal yet, or it is it All over the country, so entrepreneurs and independent consultants are getting together to share contacts. So anyway, I, I called Joanna's lead and had a really good conversation. And Encouragement. Those are major. I mean, yeah. that's like you're playing in a new league. And business strategy. Is there any way that this could backfire? These women are part of a new workforce author Dan Pink calls free agents. To me, the definition of a free agent is someone who is essentially, who is who's on their own, uh, who is untethered from a big institution, a big company, who is kind of what I call a micro-business. From graphic designers to personal trainers to nannies, it's estimated that 25 million Americans are free agents. Nobody knows for sure. But evidence of this new workforce is growing. Filings of the 1099 tax form for the self-employed have jumped by almost 7 million in the past 10 years. Temp agencies report their revenues have doubled in six years. And Staples, the office supply store of free agents, opens a new outlet every 51 hours. I just couldn't imagine getting up in the morning knowing that I have to do things because somebody else says so. Joanna Baker is a free agent. After business school, she turned down an offer at a pharmaceutical company to start her own executive search firm. Stuff I want to show you. Great. I'm working for myself. I'm working for my clients. I always uh, think when other people are commuting, I'm doing yoga. Free agency sounds great, and for those who choose it, it can be. But the ranks of free agents also include downsized corporate employees, day laborers, and temps who would rather be permanent. What's more, free agents of all kinds typically earn less money and receive poorer health benefits than their corporate counterparts. Free agents also pay taxes corporate workers do not, all of which helps explain why there is an organization called Working Today. The challenge is to bring people together. With Sarah Horowitz is a labor leader for the not, 90s. You know, she founded Working Today to help free agents get better deals on health insurance, office supplies, and taxes. If employers get a 100% tax break for health insurance and pensions, we should too. Today she is meeting with a representative for New York City cab drivers. They're in kind of the no man's land of, of protection. Yeah, and there's no guaranteed income, and most of them are living at a poverty level. Horowitz says politicians do not understand the potential political influence of free agents. What's incredible is that there's really no leadership coming from Washington that's even realized that this is a political issue. And it's sort of shocking but true that they, they, they don't get it. This is a potential political tsunami. Dan Pink gets it. In fact, he left his job as a White House speechwriter to become a free agent himself. And by his calculation, the benefits are well worth the cost. But again, I'm working till 11 o'clock at night many times, but I'm doing it upstairs. I'm getting up early in the morning, but I'm working in shorts. You want to push the door, I answer to myself, uh, and, um, and I get to see my daughter a lot, which is the best part. <laughs> Millions of Americans apparently agree. That's the start. ABC News, New York. Tomorrow, more and more Americans on the night shift. It's a living, of course, but what does it do to families? And in a moment of final thought, two blank pages in a German newspaper, what does that mean?